Good morning, Starshines. My name is DH. My pronouns are they, them. And, okay, bye, Binks. Well, uh, in that case, welcome to the Cozy Cast episode two. Um, it has been an incredible two weeks. Um, just unbelievable. I cannot get over the response to the first episode of the Cozy Cast. Um, honestly, myself and my spouse, Toot, have just been watching the numbers go up and up and up. Um, as of the recording of this, it is currently uh, Sunday, March 10th. Um, as of the recording of this, we're at like 199 subscribers. We're probably going to break 200 by the time this goes up. And I am just, I, I can't believe it. I, uh, blown away, completely blown away. Um, the two of us have just been sitting there watching the numbers, the, the view time, the number of views, the subscribers go up, uh, the number of comments I received were just incredible. Um, the number of you who reached out to thank me for my views on chronic illness, who uh, had compliments about my projects, um, who wanted to see more of the animals. Uh, what can I, I, thank you, just thank you. Um, it's been really incredible and I'm so happy to be back um, with another episode for you guys. Uh, so one question that I got quite often um, was about the curtains behind me and um, Toot actually made these. Uh, Toot is a fantastically talented crocheter. Um, they actually charted all the designs themselves. They've done tapestry crochet. I'm going to pop a little bit of footage in here. I did include some information on them uh, in one of my Cosimus episodes, but uh, I know those didn't get very many views, so I'm just going to pop it in here, uh, give you guys a little bit of a peek at the ones behind me here in our family room, as well as the other ones throughout the, uh, the rest of the house. <music> I also received a couple of comments asking if I would be doing tutorials for any of the projects that I've been posting. Um, sure, I'm not against the idea of doing tutorials. I love teaching people how to do stuff. So if there's anything specific that you guys would like to see, I honestly don't know where to start. Uh, so if there's anything specific that you want to see uh, me explain, um, how I resize patterns for my size, how I uh, resize patterns based on gauge, anything like that, drop me a comment please below and uh, I will add them to the idea queue. Um, this is early. But yes, just I've been completely and utterly astounded by the response to my first cozy cast and I hope you guys will be seeing a lot more of me. Um, so plans for future videos and uh, things that are up on the channel, I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the podcast, but I know you guys are here for some knitting content, so let's get right into the knitting content. So projects, what have I been working on for the last couple of weeks? Um, I've been focusing on two existing whips um, from the five that I showed you guys last time, and then I have a couple of new starts. So let's start with the whips. Um, I'm making a lot of progress on my stripy sleeves pullover. Um, I'm actually getting pretty close to being done. Uh, might even have a finish 
by the time the next podcast rolls out. I should not make promises because um, I have ADHD, not priorities. So this is the stripy sleeves pullover. It's stripy all over because I ran out of this gray. <laughs> so that's why the body is also striped. Um, as you can see, maybe you can see, maybe you can't see. Yes, it is bound off. The body is bound off. Um, so the body is complete. It falls really nicely on me. I'm really happy with it. Um, I have picked up, I was already working on the sleeve. Uh, and this took me about a day, this much sleeve, um, because it is a drop shoulder construction. Um, there's, uh, the sleeves are a bit shorter than they would be for something that's a little bit more fitted. So I'm hoping that the sleeves won't take very long at all. And, uh, I will have a finish sooner rather than later. Um, I really like the fit of this. Um, I might show you guys a little, I, I, I did a try on, um, because I wanted to check the length. Um, uh, so I'll show you guys a little bit of a clip of that and you can see that there is some positive ease in the body. Um, or at least here helping, <laughs> but I did get to the point at the bottom here, the, that final dark gray stripe. And I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to leave it as the same width as the stripes before it or make it, um, a lot, a longer, like a double width. Um, to more mirror the fact that the top of the, the sweater is longer. But Toot had a good point. Um, I think that if I was going to do that and mirror the stripe pattern, I should have started a lot earlier. Uh, so I gave it a try on, um, laid it out, took a couple pictures from a different couple different angles, measured it, measured it up against a sweater that I enjoy the fit of, and decided I was ready for the ribbing. So we went right into the rib. I didn't change needle sizes or anything because I'm not really looking to bring it in. I just want more of that square silhouette. Um, the rib is in the sparkly purple, same as the collar, which I have now lost. Same as the collar up here. So this is a pattern of my own design. It's a uh, kind of a mishmash of different yarns. Um, the dark gray up here is a uh, hobby amigo and then moving into some patents astra for this black and then patents canadiana is um the various shades of gray down at the bottom um then the sparkly yarn is two strands of hobby universe held together um i took a bunch of scraps from the uh actually from the curtains you saw earlier the um the star-shaped curtains uh, I took a bunch of scraps from that and made two balls of yarn, double-stranded, one vaguely light, one vaguely dark, and then uh, I'm using those to stripe for the sleeves. So I'm very, very happy with this project. Um, it's the first in my Me Made wardrobe series, was the first thing I cast on for that. It's probably going to be the first thing I finish, and uh, I'm so looking forward to being able to wear it because it's just... It's so comfortable. I, when I tried it on, it was, it just, it fit perfectly exactly the way I wanted it to. I'm so happy with it. So that's, uh, so this is probably going to be my focus whip for the next little bit. Um, big whip anyways, so that I can get those sleeves done and get that cast off. This is early, by the way, she's very excited and invested. Um, the other project that I've been working on a little bit more, but not, not a lot. Um, I've been really focused on the stripy sleeves, um, but we have had some progress since the last podcast. And I think this is the project that I've gotten the most comments on because it is, it's stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. And that is my field pullover by Camilla Bad. And as always links to all the patterns that I mentioned will be down in the description below. If I am missing anything, feel free to ask in the comments. Um, if I name check something and don't get it quite right. I hope you guys can see that early is just pacing in front of me. <laughs> so this is the field sweater. So I'm, I'm not 100% sold on this neckline. I did try it on and the neckline is a little bit wide. Um, I might unpick the, um, the bind off the, the cast on 
pick up the stitches and knit more rows of rib. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see when we get there. Um, but here we go. The yoke is finished. Um, it has this gorgeous effect with the color work. So we've got the, the cobble, the cobbles, <laughs> the cables and baubles uh, forming the grain pattern. And then when I hit this point, I just introduced, it's the same yarn at a different point in the gradient um, as a color work background. So I finished the yoke and then, but you may say, the sleeves are not on hold. That is because um, it's a gradient yarn. You can see that the gradient has already restarted. I don't particularly want to manage my yarns. Um, I could do it. I know how to do it. It's a lot of measuring, a lot of weighing, a lot of fiddling, and I just didn't feel like it. So uh, what I did instead was at the point where one would normally split for sleeves, I have actually cast on the underarm stitches. So there are 20 underarm stitches here, plus a five stitch steak panel. So, and then I continued as a, and I did that at every point where the sleeve meets the body. Um, so it looks a little bit odd right now. It'll get easier and easier the, the longer I do. As you can see, I've only done maybe an inch and a half of the body, two inches. Um, so it's gonna be a gigantic tube. Uh, I'm going to knit the gigantic tube uh, until the entire length of the sweater reaches um, 28 inches, which is how long I like my sweaters. Uh, and then I'm going to cast off the body stitches and continue working the arm stitches, the sleeve stitches, again, in the round with the gradient. Shouldn't be too much longer. Um, I'm pretty much a square at this point, <laughs> so my sleeves aren't going to be super longer than that. Uh, but at the end, I'm going to basically steek this giant tube into the front, the sleeve, the back, the other sleeve, and then seam them together into the shape of a sweater. Uh, I've seen it done before. It worked out really well for someone uh, in one of my knitting communities, which is where I got the idea from. Also, it makes it really easy knit right now. Unfortunately, it's not holding my attention quite as much because it is a really easy knit. Um, I am almost at the point where I'm going to start the sleeve decreases though, which should make it slightly more interesting. Um, I'll just have to remember to do those decreases, but the good thing doing it this method is I'm doing the sleeves basically two at a time, three at a time with the body. So uh, my decreases will be lined up nice and evenly. I'm not doing any decreases or increases on the body itself, which is going to be a nice straight silhouette. So once again, this is the Field Sweater by Camilla Bad. It's a gigantic tube. I'm gonna steek the sleeves. I'm very excited to see how it turns out. I'm very excited to see this, the fit of the round yoke sweater because a lot of the patterns um, that I have picked out for future product, projects are this round yoke design, uh, but I honestly don't know how it's gonna fit me in a pullover. So we have to finish this one first, which is why I'm plugging away at it, even though it's not super holding my attention right now. So that's it for the whips, um, but me being me, I of course have two new starts this week. I mean, one of them is because everything else that I'm working on is a large pullover. Um, I was feeling like I needed a little bit of a palette cleanser, something to do a quick win. Um, so what I ended up doing was uh, during our Monday night crafty chat on Twitch, which was actually on Wednesday this week. Um, it's basically a space if you're not familiar with Twitch. Uh, it's a live stream service where I would sit and stream this live to you and you guys can talk to me in the chat real time. Um, so what we did together as a community, um, I wanted to make a pair of saltwater mittens from this amazing book, Saltwater Mittens. It is my goal to make every single pattern in this book. Um, I love this style of mitten. It's traditional to the area of the country that I am from and um, I love them. They're the most waterproof, windproof, winterproof, amazing mittens that you can find. Um, and they're super bright and colorful. And uh, that's probably part of the reason why I love them, because there's so much creativity that you can have in the use of color and, um, and how you express yourself in that. So what we did um, together as chat is I opened up my book, 
I have six patterns left from the book to finish my quest to finish everything in it. So I just flipped through quickly, um, showed chat the different patterns. Uh, they decided on the pattern called Spring Ice. Um, and then I just had a bucket of yarn um, in various different colors, set that out. Twitch chat decided which colors I was going to work it on. So it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it was, uh, it was an interesting community experience, um, because I know one person was like immediately, I, I want blue, blue, definitely blue. And then someone else was like purple, 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 purple. Um, so we ended up, so this is, uh, what we ended up doing. I've got, so this is the spring ice trigger mittens pattern. Um, I've finished the pattern on the mitten itself, so you can see right there, that's the patterning. Uh, this is the whole mitten. I do a super long cuff on my mitten, so this is about five inches long, uh, because, so if this is where your hand starts, if this is where your hand starts, then you're, this is going to be way up into your sleeve, so you're not going to get snow on your arm, basically. Um, yeah, they're great mittens. <laughs> uh, so this is, I'm also doing the trigger mitten, which is why I have uh, stitches on hold. This is the thumb, this is the uh, trigger finger, and then this is the rest of the mitt. <clears throat> so a trigger mitten, um, it originated for hunters who needed to wear warm gloves, but also be able to use a hunting rifle at the same time. Uh, but basically it has a split. So this would be for your uh, forefinger. Um, and then the thumb so that you have more control. You're kind of doing a lobster thing. Uh, but they're perfect for walking the dog, shoveling snow, basically anything where you need just slightly more dexterity. Um, but you don't really want to be taking off your mitts because it's super cold. Uh, I love trigger mitts. They are great. So yeah, so this, so I've been working on this. Um, usually these mittens take me a few days to make. Uh, they're very quick, but, uh, I got distracted, of course, by another new project, so I haven't been working on them as much as I wanted to. Um, the yarn for this is Briggs and Little Heritage, which is a yarn that is, uh, it's a very rustic, let's see, I don't know if you can see the tweed there. It's a very rustic, 100% wool, 100% Canadian wool. It is grown, milled, dyed, and spun and sold in New Brunswick, um, which again is the area of the country that I'm originally from, the Maritimes. Uh, it's my favorite yarn. It really just is. Um, I say this every time. I love this yarn, <laughs> which is so funny because I don't tend to like rough woolly yarns or rough textures. Like I can't, I can't do mohair. I cannot do mohair at all. But for some reason, this yarn, it's the good touch. It just, it gives me the best sensory feeling when I'm working with it. I love wearing it. Um, it's really rough, uh, rustic. It's really hard wearing. Um, so the mittens, so it's an Aran weight yarn. So it's slightly thicker than a worsted. The mittens I'm working up on a four millimeter needle. So the gauge is quite tight. Um, which makes a very tight fabric, which is what makes them so incredibly winterproof. Um, they're just, they're the best mittens. Um, I will stand by this. They are the warmest. They will keep your hands dry. And uh, yeah, they're great. I love them. So that is the Spring Ice Trigger Mitts from uh, Saltwater Mittens. So that was my first new cast on, and it'll probably be done within the next few days. I'm hoping so anyways, um, but we'll see. The other new start that I have, I'm not expecting to finish it within a few days. Um, and it's also not knitting because uh, I do other crafts. Uh, I know how to crochet. I do a lot of um, creative journaling, like bullet journaling and paper crafting and that kind of thing. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is cross stitch. I didn't have a cross stitch project on, on the needles, in the hoop, on the go words. Um, I didn't have a cross stitch project going before, uh, but to found a pattern that is absolutely perfect for a friend of mine. Um, they are going to love this pattern. Um, 
so I kind of had to cast it on, cast it on, started it, kitted it up. What is the correct terminology? I clearly I am not part of the floss tube community quite yet, but we'll see maybe eventually. Uh, so cross stitch. Um, let me show you what I have so far. Ta -da, da, 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 da. So I know it doesn't quite look like much. Um, I'm missing about half the colors uh, that I need to do. We need to do a stitch wood order uh, and get the rest of them in. So this is just, I kind of started with what I had available to me. Um, but the pattern is Kyrie and Sora from Kingdom Hearts sharing a star fruit. Um, it's not called a star fruit, it's called something else. Anyways, uh, I'm going to drop a link to the pattern in the description below. I just got it on Etsy, but here's a picture of what it's going to look like when it is fully stitched, or at least this is the mock-up of it. Um, I am really looking forward to it. It's probably going to be one of the biggest pieces I've ever attempted. It's about 12,000 stitches, and usually I stick in like the three to 4,000 range. Um, I'm not a very prolific cross-stitcher. I tend to work on one project at a time and then go months and months and months without working on anything at all. Uh, however, I still love to look at cross stitch patterns and I'll often spend several hours uh, scrolling Etsy for new patterns. I also subscribe to uh, several cross stitch magazines through our library's online system that I like to read and save patterns for things I'm probably never going to stitch. Um, so yeah, so I do need to order some more colors for it. Um, so we're going to do an order with Stitchwit. Uh, hashtag not spawn, hashtag should be spawn, hashtag everybody go and check out Stitchwit right now. I'm going to leave a link to them in the description below. It's stitchwit.ca. I'm not sure what the shipping's like outside of Canada, but within Canada, it's free over $15. She stocks everything. Uh, Heather from Stitchwit is incredible best customer service. Um, she stocks every kind of DMC floss. If she's out of something, she will ask if you want the rest of your order and then send the, the, the other one separately at no extra cost. Um, super responsive to um, emails and questions. And I had a question about one of the DMC flosses, whether or not it was actually glow in the dark. And she sent me this whole response about Yes, it is, but she doesn't list it as glow in the dark because she thinks that a different glow in the dark thread is better, but she doesn't stock it. But this is where I can find it. Stitchwit.ca for any of your cross stitching needs within Canada. Heather is the way to go, um, 100. Uh, percent Prices are the same as you would find at, you know, Michaels, any other craft store, and you don't actually have to go to the craft store and you don't have to deal with the Michaels being out of the floss that you need because of course you go in looking for like 12 flosses and they'll have eight of them and then, yeah. It's a problem. So stitchwit.ca, check them out. Um, not sponsored, should be sponsored, could be sponsored. Heather, email me. So those are the projects I've been working on. Um, recently, it's the last couple of days, it's just been the mittens. Um, I do need to join the yarn back in for the stripy sleeves and get those rolling again uh, because I'm, I'm really excited to actually have that as a wearable. Um, but yeah, okay, so that is all the crafting content. Um, if that is all you are here for, then uh, you can skip to the end of the video if you would like. If not, uh, stick around. I'm going to do the uh, chronic illness update as well as some community news. All right, friends, if you're still with me, welcome to the chronic illness update section of the podcast. Um, I, you may have noticed that this podcast is a little bit choppier. I've made some cuts and that is because I've had to stop and start recording several times. Um, I, uh, I got some kind of an infection, just a flu or a bug or cold, something like a minor infection. Um, but of course with me, it's never just a minor infection. Um, so it actually caused a lot of inflammation in my chest. Um, and the inflammation in my chest made it so that it was putting pressure on my lungs 
and also causing a lot of pain. So I was in extreme chest pain that was radiating out to other parts of my arm and shoulder, and I was incredibly short of breath. Uh, so after consulting my family doctor, my family doctor said, what are you doing? Go to the hospital right now. We have to make sure it's not a heart attack. I'm like, I know it's not a heart attack, but I went to the hospital anyways. So five hours later confirmed it's not a heart attack. Uh, it is just a lot of inflammation in my chest. Um, so it kind of sucks. I, uh, because there's not a whole lot I can do. I'm on anti-inflammatories and I have a new puffer, uh, to help me with the shortness of breath, but I'm in a lot of chest pain, uh, like pretty much constantly. Uh, there were a couple nights where I found it very difficult to sleep. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's, that's what I've been dealing with. Um, I am quite short of breath. Uh, you probably won't see it very much because I'm going to cut it all out. <laughs> But uh, every few seconds or so, I have to stop and take a few deep breaths in order to keep talking to you. I actually had to cancel stream um, on Friday because I just, I just couldn't talk for two hours. Um, and in fact, Toot and I have been communicating by text a lot of the time because I just, I, it, talking hurts um, and it's a lot of effort. Um, so that's the... Uh, the inflammation to chest pain to hospital visit pipeline. But yeah, that's that's it for the chronic illness update. Uh, it's nothing, it's one of those things where it isn't a direct result of the long COVID. It's a direct result of the minor infection that I had, but because of just my body being so under attack from all sides, it's resulted in uh, an exaggerated response, basically. <laughs> All right, community news. So what's new around the channel? Um, well, <laughs> welcome to all of the new subscribers. Like I said, we're probably at 200 by this point because we're at 199 as I'm filming this. Um, and I think I just got a pop-up that someone else subscribed. So if that was you, thanks. Uh, truly blown away by the, uh, the number of new subscribers. I think I had 36 when I posted my first episode. So that amount of growth in the last two weeks has just been phenomenal. Um, I have had a small presence here on YouTube and on Twitch before that. Uh, if you know, if you had a look at through the channel, um, there are old gaming videos, old crafting streams, that kind of thing. Uh, so what I am trying to do is I'm just trying to organize and condense my content a little bit. Um, so you might start to see some of my past live streams pop up uh, on your recommended page. And they are also going to be here on the channel as the most recent videos uh but hopefully they will not pop up in your notifications if they do i super apologize i am trying to turn off notifications um, all i'm doing is uploading my backlog of live streams um but if you are looking for some crafty content that's just chill uh something to throw on while you need to get some work done a uh, little bit of body doubling check those out um i'm gonna leave a link to the playlist in the description box below um and it's just the crafty chat live streams um it's our monday night crafty chats which sometimes happen on wednesdays um i chat i listen to lo-fi i craft um you'll see a bunch of different stuff uh one pretty fun one we did christmas in july and i uh did a plastic canvas um, Christmas kit from Mary Maxim from like the late 80s early 90s uh, so that was a lot of fun so definitely check those out if you're looking for something else to watch uh, and I'm going to continue uploading those uh, slowly over the course of the next week or so um, so if you do get kind of a deluge I do apologize for it it's not going to be forever um, I'm just working through a backlog um, there is a new video on the channel that I recommend you guys go check out, and that is the Me Made Wardrobe Project introduction. So I've been talking a lot a lot about that uh, on the Twitch channel and also in the first episode. It's uh, my ongoing quest to have a wardrobe made of knitted wearables um, that I can just grab and go, that I don't need to create an outfit around like this. Um, so this is my Edgar slipover. I love this piece. It's from um, Hand Dyed Hand Spun by a friend of mine. Um, but as you can see, I kind of have to like fancy it up a little bit. Like I need to wear the collared shirt with it. 
Um, it's not, it's not a piece that I can just wear on its own. I need to plan an outfit around it. Um, so check out the Me Made Wardrobe Project intro because I go through a ton of project plans. I talk about every single thing that I'm planning on making, uh, my entire process on how I plan the Me Made Wardrobe, um, the different categories that I broke my wardrobe down into, all that kind of stuff. So definitely go check that out. Um, there will be some updates to that um, over the course of probably the next couple of years, uh, just as I finish stuff pretty much. Um, so that's the newest video on the channel, and then obviously this one is going to be now. Uh, and then in two weeks, there will be an episode three. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a video in between. I may or may not, um, but if I do, I will leave notifications on for that. Uh, so what's happening on the uh, Twitch channel? We are doing our Monday Night Crafty Chat, um, as always, and we are just finishing up playing Yono and the Celestial Elephants, which is what I've been playing for since January. Actually, uh, I went through and uploaded the live streams of that to the channel yesterday um, in preparation for the last stream. So it's a super cute little game. You should definitely check it out. It's very fun. Uh, that's Yono and the Celestial Elephants. Um, I... Uh, I posted a couple clips of it to the TikTok as well. So if you're not a Twitch user and that uh, you don't really want to pick up another platform, I've got you covered. We are going to attempt, I say we, it's me, it's me and Toot. It, it is a we, it's it's me and Toot. Um, I couldn't do it without her. So uh, starting, for me it's tomorrow. By the time this video goes out, it will have already happened on Monday because I'm planning on putting this video up, up on Wednesday. Um, but we are going to be streaming Crafty Chat and the gaming streams on YouTube as well as Twitch. So uh, keep an eye out in your notifications. You should get a notification half an hour before I go live. And then when I go live, um, I, actually, I actually accidentally went live last Friday. Didn't mean to. Um, that was... I was, I was trying to set up the software to do it and I thought I had everything turned off. I did not. Um, so we're doing it on purpose this week. <laughs> so if you want to join us, um, uh, Mondays, 6.30 PM crafty chat is going to be either here on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, you can hang out on both. I'll be active in both communities. I'll be talking to people in both communities. Um, and then Fridays we're going to be doing some games. Um, so finishing up Yono on this Friday. So in two days from now, if you're watching this the day it goes live, uh, we're going to be finishing up yono and then i honestly don't know what i'm gonna play after that and i've got to figure it out um but yeah i hope the dual stream thing works out i have never tried streaming to youtube before uh but i'm very excited to give it a shot uh and i hope i will see some of you guys there All right, I think that's it for today. Bit of a shorter one. Uh, maybe I'm not as interesting as I thought I was, but uh, that's a bridge we'll cross when we get to it and I finally run out of things to say to you. So in the meantime, please like the video and leave a comment. I had so much fun reading all of your comments and replying to them these past two weeks. It really helps me to get to know you better, get to know who's watching my content and um, what I can do to, to help, to entertain, to... Uh, inform, instruct, and um, just hang out with you guys. So please leave a comment, uh, leave a like. Uh, if you like the content, subscribe. If you want to get notified when I go live or when a new episode comes up, don't forget to click on the little bell. And right about now you should be seeing some buttons popping up around my head. This one's pretty cool. If you click it, you'll subscribe to the channel and you'll never miss another video. And if you hit one of these, you'll see one of those other videos. We're going to come back to you with another cozy cast in two weeks. But until then, I will see you in the Discord. I will see you on Twitch. Maybe I'll see you on a live stream. And as always, I will see you in my heart. All right. Bye, guys.